Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today it's time to jump into MASH again, and this time we're going to talk about time nodes in MASH and how you can use them to create some pretty cool effects. Okay, here we go. Hi right, guys, well, we're in Maya 2018, and it's time to have some MASH fun. Okay, so let's start off by creating an object. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and I'm going to uh, create polygon primitives, select the cylinder. We're going to hit Control A to open up the attribute editor, and I'm going to go into Poly Cylinder 1 and let's set round cap and then increase the subdivision on the round cap to actually get a round cap. Okay, I want to increase the height somewhat, so let's pull that up so we got something like this, and then I want the height subdivision as well so I can animate and bend this guy. Okay. Looks good so far. Now what I want to do is I want to cut off the bottom part and I want to align it with the grid, okay? So I'm going to jump fuse right here. I'm going to hit W on my keyboard. You can see that my pivot point is in the middle. And I'm going to hit the insert key, which will allow me to move it down. And I'm going to hold down the V key so it will snap to the vertices. And I'm going to stop down here, okay? Now once I got that, I can hit the insert key again. I can hit F to zoom in. And I'm going to right click, go to face, drag, select, and delete. Okay. Right. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this guy and I'm going to move it up and snap it to the grid. So I'm going to hold X while I do that. And boom, there you go. Okay. So now that we have this guy in place, let's animate it. Okay. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to go up to deform. We're going to go to nonlinear and bend, and that will create a bend deformer. And if you go into the attribute editor, click on bend, and we move this around, we have one happy worm. Okay, cool. So let's set this back to uh, actually, we'll set it something like this. For the reason that I want the top to be animated, I want the bottom to stay static. So for that, I'm going to bump up the low bound, like so. And now we only have the top responding. Okay, we'll set that back to zero. This guy is good to go. And we're going to set up some frames. Let's say we'll do um, 60 frames on this guy. Okay, good, good. 60 frames. I'm going to go into this bend value right here. Let's make sure we're on frame one. And in this uh, position, uh, perfectly straight at zero, I'm going to right click and go to set key. Then I'm going to scrub towards, let's say, uh, I don't know, 30. And we'll bump that value all the way up here. And I'll we'll right click and set key again. And then let's go to, let's say, I don't know, 45, 46 maybe. We'll go the other way. And right click, set key. All right. And then we'll run out and start over. Okay. So let's see what we got. We're going to hit play. And you can see that it's it's staying in this position a little bit. So let's see what we can do about that. What we'll do is we'll trim this down a little bit. Let's trim this to, let's say, 50. And hit play again. Yeah. So it slowly bends to the right and then snaps back in upward position, which is fine for this uh, tutorial. Okay. All right. So now that we have that, let's uh, make sure it's in the straight position. We'll go back to frame one. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a mesh network. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this guy. We're going to go up to our workspace and we're going to select a mesh. And that will give us all of this good stuff. Okay. We got our attribute editor. We have our graph editor. We have our mesh editor. We have our outliner and we have our perspective view. Uh, it's all good. You can forget about all of that. We'll, we'll get to it in a bit. Okay. So I got this guy selected and I'm going to go up to the mesh menu and I'm going to click on this ball right here where it says create mesh network. And as we do that, you see that we suddenly have 10 of these guys in a row. And let's see what happens when we hit play. And they all start to move in sync. 
Now what you can see in the background is that is the, um, the deformer. Uh, that is actually the original object because MASH is an instancer, it doesn't copy. So that is basically the, the hidden object, if you will, all right? So a couple of things we can do here. First, I'm gonna hit stop and jump back to frame one. We're gonna look at the distribution. So I'm gonna go to MASH distribute right here and I can choose whether I want more or less than 10 objects by playing with this. I can go all the way up like this or way back. But what I wanna do first is I wanna change the distribution type. Now, right now it's set to linear. I want this to be set to grid. And once it's in a grid, I can actually increase the distance. And let's go with something that fits basically on my grid like so. And once I have that, I can now go in and see if I want to increase the numbers or not. I'm gonna go into grid X and we'll go into grid Z and there you go. So basically, if I now hit play, all of these should respond equally. Okay, let's see if that's true. We're gonna hit play. And you see that they cut into each other. So let's uh, tweak that a little bit. Let's do five here and five here. Maybe even less, we'll do four and four. Now you can increase the distance if you like, but this is another way to go through it, okay? Right, so, so far, nothing fancy. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna kind of make this uh, movement a bit more random, okay? So just in case you want to make a field of vertical worms or whatever, you know, it, kind of makes it look more like they're alive, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna bring in a time node. So we're gonna go into our MASH editor and on this red button here with the plus key, if you click on it, you can go down to time, okay? Now, as we select that, uh, you can see that there's an option to choose animation start and animation end. Once you add this, this overrides your animation. So if I hit play right now, it would look weird and I'll show you. The reason being that it stops the animation at 25 and it starts over again. So we need to go to 50, okay? And let's uh, hit that again. There you go. It bends slowly to the right and then snaps back, okay? So what options do we have here? Well, uh, for example, we have the time skill. You can make it really fast, you can make it really slow, okay? And when you make it slow, keep in mind that you don't have enough animation frames to play out the whole animation. That's why it's not completing its cycle. And now it is, all right? Okay, you can do it random as well, which will give you something really freaky, okay? Like this. And that's kind of what this is about, right? So you have stagger frames here that you can play with. And let's see what else we can do here. Okay, you can do a time offset if you want. But all in all, what I just wanted to show you here is that this is a way for you to go in and play with that, okay? So uh, feel free to uh, try all sorts of cool things here. You can use this for a grass simulation. If you want to do some kind of alien thing, you can do that too. And you can also use this for uh, motion graphics. And that is something that I will be doing in the near future, okay? So hopefully this will help you on your way to have some fun with the mash and the time node. And uh, that said, thank you guys for watching as always and see you guys next time, bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.